Good evening, campers. It's me, the literary equivalent of X-Men Cyclops. Today we're going to talk about Carl Uwe Knausgaard's The Morning Star, of which the dust cover is completely destroyed. Ask me no questions, I will tell you no lies. That's not what Knausgaard is about. I've read all of his My Struggle series, which is about understanding truth of what it is to be truthful, to almost a confessionary standard. I'll, I'll leave the playlist for that down below. And the Morning Star at times rips from My Struggle. If you've read any of those books, you will see glaring resemblances and passages of almost virgin on just a bit of a paraphrase. This is a Knausgaardian book, and if you like Knausgaard, you're going to like The Morning Star. If you don't like Knausgaard, you're probably not going to like Knausgaard's Morning Star. Before we kick off, I'm also going to leave Brandon Bookcase's video down below, where I had a very long conversation where we had both read this book and have very different opinions. So after you've listened to this, go and check that out. The Morning Star. What is the Morning Star? The Morning Star is a star that appears in the sky over contemporary Norway. And that's really it. Some people are inquisitive about it. Some people aren't. Some people notice it. And some people want very long conversations about the morning star. Some even go in into the philosophical and the teleological. As such, we are going to follow the lives of nine very standard, very run-of-the-mill Norwegian people over the course of two days. Mm, I say that, but do we really follow nine people? I mean, one of the characters, Vibeka, we, we only have once in the second day. And that's it. And she's not linked to any of the other characters. This is part of a trilogy, I believe. And I feel as though there's going to be crossover. But some characters here completely take the foreground. It'd be easy in reviewing this book to give you all the characters. But we're going to stick to our good friend, Yosti. He's not our friend. We don't really want to be associated with him. But he's a journalist. And he's reporting on a band. Which he believes is going to be the biggest story to drop they are a satanic metal band if you're if you know your black metal you know where this is going the bandmates have been brutally murdered and one of them has gone completely awry you could say it is <coughs> mayhem i'm really proud of that one no one knows what has happened no one knows why it's happened no one knows even how this brutality of murder has taken place in such a short space of time. The only thing that they know is that the Morning Star appeared and this happened. And with its occurrence in the sky, strange things happen, such as crabs on the road. It's enough for people to scratch their heads and go, that's a bit weird, but nothing to completely link it to like the end of the world or that the Morning Star is truly changing everything, such as Catherine, who is a priest. She buries a man, but will later see this same man again in a very strange circumstance but it could just be that he has a twin or that someone really looks like him it's enough to raise an eyebrow but not enough for her to feel as though something truly magnificent has happened so we we're going to focus on yossi but we're going to change into catherine she's a priest and discussions on religion and meaning and what it means to have been it is paramount those who know their theology, you'll know that the morning star is another word for the devil. Don't worry if you didn't know, it will be explained within Knausgaard's prose. He's explicit in that manner, but what he's subtly trying to get across, that it doesn't really matter what people believe in, it doesn't really matter how the morning star occurred, or even what the morning star is. Is it just another star? Is it a bit like Saturn Aurelia with the star of Bethlehem? Is it a supernova? Is it just something else entirely. We don't really have the answers. It doesn't really matter what you believe. What I think in Ausgard here is discussing is what is the purpose of the meaning of belief? Because the Satanists believe something completely contradictory to the priest and her atheistic friends have completely opposed beliefs. But what does the meaning, what's important is the distance between the belief and the believer. What does this have to say about a person and what does it mean individualistically in order to have a belief or even a non- 
belief. Klausgaard traverses this discussion with poise and prowess. Neither does it become preachy towards belief or non-belief. There is enough back and forth. It is mature in how it approaches. It truly doesn't matter what you believe in because the what is almost insignificant to this. It's more the why do we believe it. All interested stuff. It's a shame the Knausgaard prose is as mundane and as boring and as Knausgaardian as he has ever made it with slight additions to this where when people scream they go ah or when a baby cries it goes wah oh, oh i read it so many times it it just comes across really amateurish I, and it's just something about it that i just didn't like and i also didn't like right at the end of this is where he crams the most like stephen king heavy like he leans into like the dreamscape and like the really weird and the surreal with yostine who who goes into like this purgatorial dante-esque hell where like the truly weird stuff is happening but it's right at the end and then past that we move into just just an essay just an essay on death and what it means to die and the processing of our own death which after reading 400 pages in my struggle on a biopic of adolf hitler i didn't think i wanted another klaus Gard essay and it turned out i was right i didn't want that and it's frustrating because i know that he's written this to a page number so it has to be stretched it has to, it's very superfluous in some areas i think he needs it because this book ends on page 666. The number of the beast, the mark of the devil, the morning star. It, it's very, again, it's explicit. Again, this is part of a trilogy and I can imagine the second book, based on how this ends, we're going to find out a lot more about the weird occurrences and everything that is going to happen. So much so, Klauskar tells us that it's even going to undermine the satanic murders which feels as though that that really couldn't be topped but somehow it's going to this is just a classic Knausgaard novel you're going to love it you're going to hate it it's very mundane it's very day in the life of it's a five out of ten